Where is my hat? It's got to be around here somewhere. Not behind the door. In the bin. That's not it. Where could it? Oh! <gasps> Shirt? It's all the Disney movies I grew up with. In all the glory of standard definition. Amazing. <gasps> yeah, let's watch The Fox and the Hound. I've never seen that one. What about Beauty and the Beast? We already watched that one today, and yesterday, and the day before that. But it's my favorite one you see. Come on, this one has animals that are not footstools. Okay, at first you had my curiosity, now you have my attention. <sighs> Wasn't that amazing? The hell did I just watch? Fo Fox and the Hound. It's amazing. Did you fall asleep? I, I, I might have. I, I remember the horror movie opening. The um, borderline animal abuse. The, the really sad ending? Yeah. And did, did we watch a Disney movie? Like, What are you talking about? It's a classic. With a record-breaking $12 million to spend, The Fox and the Hound was going to be the crowning jewel to Disney's legacy. It was even going to come out on Christmas in 1980. That's a great gift. That plan was ruined by a man named Don Bluth. What did he do? He left the team! You just don't do that! You don't leave Disney, Disney leaves you. No kidding. Mm-hmm. He also took a bunch of the animators with him to make fake Disney films. Some were damn awesome, some Anastasia. How dare you! Anastasia was amazing and I will fight you on it if you say otherwise. But how are we both going to fit on that little disc? Anyway, this left room for newcomers to Disney like Glenn Keane, Brad Bird, and Tim Burton to stop making names for themselves on bigger projects. Yeah, but it doesn't seem to be quite in their own style yet. Well, of course not. That's how you find your style. You find out what isn't. You think I dressed like this overnight? Lots of trial and error involved on this. <laughs> I've seen the piles of burnt clothes, Marcus. Yeah. But no, I mean, the way you talk about the shakeup, it makes so much more sense artistically. Tim Burton did what in this movie? Well, I know he worked on Vixie the Lady Fox. See, that would explain all the wide shots and almost one-dimensional quality to her character. It's like he hated the very idea of her. But, but listen... It explains the inconsistency in the animation, though. If you take a look at the opening by itself, it has the artistic structure of a horror movie. Lingering on shadows and muted ambiance for five whole minutes before a murder takes place. Thank you, Stephen King. I didn't know you worked for Disney. Come on, it's Disney! Everyone's parents die! It's the law! Be that as it may, this is actually one of the few Disney films to show blood. Oh, and if man. you actually look at it, it's one of the darker films ever made by Disney. Oh. I mean, here, if you look at the train scene... No, 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 no! In this scene, the old dog is actually supposed to die. No. That's why the animation looked so realistic. No. Even I thought there's no way he could survive no. But the producers had to change it at the last minute because they thought it was too dark for kids. No, no, no. It was Pat Buttram's performance as Chief that saved his life. I know it. Pat Buttram. Buttram, yeah. Oh, the Sheriff of Nottingham, you mean. Yeah, I couldn't unsee it. It was... Same voice, same face. Honestly, I think there were some same lines in there, too. It was hilarious. Lady, what are you doing? You're nitpicking a Disney classic. Reminded me of somebody in more than a few ways. I mean, tell me what this movie made you feel. What I feel? Well, if I'm being completely frank, I... What I feel? I didn't feel anything. I mean, sure, there were some scenes that I could relate to. But, honestly, the only heartwarming thing I felt was in the beginning when the mother had to say goodbye. 
Are you sure we saw the same movie? Well, what did you see then? Two creatures, one wild and saved, the other bred to hunting, find each other before they learn their enemies and confuse that bond for friendship, which they grow over their youth. The inevitable separation as they're forced by nature and nurture out of each other's lives and the heartache of finding their friend, nay brother, on the opposite side of the line. Heartbreak as friend becomes natural foe and how friendship eventually overcomes it at the last possible second. But does it really? Lady, this is North and South for kids. Be that as it may, if you actually look at how much screen time is devoted to what you just described, it's minimal at best. I mean, if you look, you've got two rush scenes because they become best of friends for a reason. Did you want a documentary? Maybe a novel? Because this actually was based on a book. Have you read it? No. Hold on. Wow! You just turned invisible! That's amazing! Anyway, you watch these two grow up on opposite sides. One raised on the leash, one roaming the woods. One domesticated, one wild. And despite this, there's a connection that grows in a very short time. Audiences who let this unnatural friendship bloom in their hearts despite logical gaps I'm looking at you, Invisible Lady are rewarded by heart rates and chases where Todd's life hangs in the balance and the weird line between obedience and loyalty that Copper has to walk as he's ordered to hunt down his friend. It's not until a series of unfortunate events drive a wedge between the two that you're devastated. But in the end, it's for the best. Because you see... <laughs> Miss me? Why did you explode when you became visible? Because tearing holes in the fabric of reality takes a lot of energy. It's loud. Anyways, I think I figured out why this movie bugs me the way it does. Why? We see two different stories mushed into one medium. The behavior is great, yet the dialogue coming from the animals is just bizarre. It's a sloppy personification, leaving me feeling like it's incomplete. If you watch the film silent, you understand the animal movements, and they're completely natural. But if you're listening to the dialogue, you'd swear it was humans talking. It doesn't even meld into a cohesive character representation! Not even when the Widow Tweed has to release Todd at the Game Preserve. It's a good scene. But that's my point! He doesn't talk, and you can still understand what he's thinking and feeling without that clunky dialogue. And Widow Tweed doesn't talk either. She's just exchanging guilty glances with sadness and remorse. <laughs> yep. She is. <laughs> it's okay, Bacchus. It's not real. But it feels like it is! That's why Disney's so successful! Even when they misstep with logic or get facts wrong, they have a way of wrapping the audience's heart around their little finger, tugging it one way, pulling another on a whim. They had me hook, line, and sinker from the moment that gunshot sounded in the beginning. And that takes real skill. I'm not denying their skills of manipulation here. All I'm saying is we would have had a 40 minute movie if they'd cut up the bird mafia, or a 10 times better film at the same length if they focused on the character development more. You know, I would have liked to see more young fox and hound wrestling. Copper, you're my very best friend. And you're mine too, Todd. And we'll always be friends forever, won't we? Yeah, forever. You, you have to see how awkward this is. It just makes my heart sore, that's all I know. <laughs> Say, Bacchus, you remember how this is based on a novel? Yes. Well, I read it while I was meandering through my terror, and it's quite an interesting read. Did it have more scenes of the cute little animals? Well... Chief and Copper's roles were totally reversed. Todd had two vixens and cubs with each. Todd was raised by the hunter that killed his parents, and Todd and Copper were never actually friends. Never... Never friends? Never... Back it, so, I mean, hold yourself together. It's just a book. No, what's never... <laughs> She was never afraid. Back it. Never. Never afraid. Oh, oh my god. Why did it happen? Bacchus, I'm so sorry. Why? I, I, never I, I became a complete psycho. Never I can fix this. Hold on. Say, Bacchus, you remember how this is based on a novel? Yes. Well, I read it while I was meandering through my terror, and it's quite an interesting read. Did it have more scenes of the cute little animals? Well... 
What was that? Oh, just housekeeping. Okay. So, you were right. It was a great movie. I knew you'd agree. Oh, wanna watch another one? Can it be Beauty and the Beast? That's not a no. <laughs> The old dog was actually supposed to die in this. <laughs> and I feel like an ass. <laughs> Welcome to life as psycho. Holy shit. I just like got a weird reflection. I'm like, oh my god, this is a dick thing to do. To like someone with the mental capability of a child. <laughs>